I kind of hate myself for what I'm about to do because I'm very big. If you guys know me, I'm keeping things very simple, especially when I like showcase things on YouTube, tall about Madden, et cetera, et cetera. I'm very big on keeping everything really stupid simple, but I do love nerding out about certain things I'm passionate about, and one of those is Madden. In this one, we're going to be talking about how to pass the ball in Madden, but really go into kind of the finer, more like schematic details of it. So here it is. You might not believe me when I first say this, but... The majority and really the almost every single meta route combo in Madden, unless it was legitimately a glitch like the ad glitch beginning the year, and even that still, has fallen into following the rules that's laid out right here. Essentially, we have a bunch of different, I don't know if this would be called quadrants or sections, whatever you want to call it, that kind of identify what parts of the field should be attacked in pretty much any single given play. Now, a couple of rules here, basically, I have a little Twitter thread on this, we're going to talk it through. Not understanding this is why a lot of people struggle putting their own route combos on the field, and they suck, and they throw a lot of picks because of it. They just don't understand this. I'm going to break down what this is. A couple rules way fast that we got to get into. More than one wide receiver should never be in a single section, and if they are in a single section, they should be meshing, which basically means running over top of one another. Think of two drags. Think of post slant uh, meshing over top of one another for about a second, right? They really shouldn't be in the same area for more than a second. And then routes should complement each other so for that to happen they need to be in kind of adjacent sections so if you just have one route in yellow on the left here you have one route in yellow on the right here and then you have a route in you know uh deep red and then you know in shallow orange right here they're not really helping each other out a lot rather you'd rather have a route in light blue yellow red and then maybe maybe one that's not adjacent coming back in like deep purple okay and i'll explain that a little bit more right the majority of route combos in that have been meta throughout the years all follow this. They genuinely do. And immediately, I'm going to show post slant. This is one of the most common route combos that we see constantly. And you see, even with this style of route combo, this follows this right here. These are the different sections of the field that you want to attack on any given play. Okay? So if we're going to sit here and stare at this, we can kind of get an idea of what I'm talking about. Let's, break, let's kind of break it down, what the sections are. And I'm going to do a deeper video on this on my main channel where... It's a little bit less like off the top of the head, a little bit more, a little bit more uh, detailed. But I thought this would be a pretty cool thing. First and foremost, on the left side here, we have the shallow flat. Then we're gonna have the intermediate flat. This goes anywhere from like seven yards to really about like 25, 30 yards down the field. Okay, it's a pretty big area on the sideline. And then up top we have the red area of the field which is just the, the the entire deep part of the field the reason this is all one giant section and not cut up into thirds like everything else is really on any given play you shouldn't have two routes attacking this part of the field unless it's a designed bomb right obviously there's exceptions and but really unless it's a designed bomb play very few meta plays have more than one route attacking this deep part of the field with the goal of it to be thrown in this deep part of the field. I'll tell you what I mean by that in a second. We get into the middle. This is where a lot of people have a lot of misconception. A lot of people consider this entire middle one giant thing. It's called, you know, hey, attack the middle of the field. In reality, there's the short seam, which is this orange. There's the intermediate seam. There's the shallow middle. Then there's the intermediate middle, right? And then you have, obviously, again, the short seam and the intermediate seam again. The reason this is not all one thing is because a route can attack this part and a route can attack this part, right, both in the purple and not be and, and, and complement each other, right? So it wouldn't make sense to have this all be one section because in reality, you could also have a route in the orange right here and then a route in the orange right here, and these routes can actually work hand-in-hand -hand with one another, so they're not actually occupying the same section. All right, that was a huge deal. Obviously, on the other side, we have the shallow flat and then the yellow flat again. And a lot of these can be attacked with pretty basic route combos, but I kind of want to give you an idea of what this would look like. So if we go into a game right here, and we're actually in practice mode. If we go into something like, let's say, some pretty basic as bunch or Y trail. We'll go Y trail from uh, bunch hat back strong, and we'll put together a route combo that's pretty basic. Let me back up my, the ball here, and I can kind of show you what this looks like, right? So let's go here. Boom, boom, boom. And right now, we essentially have all these areas of the field being hit at different parts, okay, especially on the right side. 
you see we have the intermediate flat, or we have the short flat being hit by an out route. We have an intermediate flat being hit by this corner route. And then we have the deep red part of the field being attacked by this post route, or rather by the streak route. The post is coming back across kind of the intermediate middle, almost to the deep middle, which I don't love. Ideally, this post would be a little bit shorter. And what you could do is actually, you'd ideally have it like kind of be like an in route like this. And uh, maybe a shallower in route if the play art shows correctly. It doesn't want to show correctly, but it is a shallower in route now. Yeah, so we have a drag route now, et cetera, et cetera, with the intentions of it being thrown pretty early into the play, right over the middle of the field. Because obviously, in this case, does the drag and the out route technically run into each other? Yes, but not deep enough into the, like, look, the out route, look at the space between the out route and the drag. Like, they don't run into each other. If you, it, you, know, you know what I'm saying? Like, even though they do, technically the play art runs into each other, they really don't. Another really good example of this is we go into a play like Triple Out, where, you know, I'm going to recreate a pretty popular route combo uh, that was from Gun Tide Offset this year. I'm just doing it from Bunch Tide N, which is, you know, something like this, where we have that deep corner, shallow corner. Deep corner is attacking that red part of the field that we talked about earlier, and then we have the shallow, which is the short corner in this case, attacking the more intermediate part of the uh, of the flat and then you know on top of that we can have a drag from a and then we have on the back side this in route coming across and following a little bit now if we watch this in route let's see that the in route and drag get too close no they don't plenty of room so we're fine this is a pretty good play call what a lot of people do though they have this huge issue where they'll run something like like this on the right side right we have two slants going and they pretty much occupy the same part of the field throughout. Notice both these slants occupy pretty much exactly the same area of the field all throughout. And then not only that, they also are getting a good amount in the way of this post on the left side where it comes back across. And you can see there's, a, a, for the most part of this play, at least two wide receivers, if not three, are within the same area of the field at all times. Right now, like all of them kind of cross into each other, right? Whereas if you want to see maybe a little bit better way to do this, let's show this is we could do something like this, where now we're attacking that intermediate middle with X, we're attacking the shallow middle with A, and then we're attacking this the right short seam with B, and now watch the spacing. All the routes are way, way, way more spaced out. Again, ideally, that's a little bit shallow for post. I just picked a random play with the post route um, because you want to make sure he is in that intermediate part. The area of the field between the intermediate deep middle or the intermediate middle and the actual deep red part of the field can get kind of skewed based on where you're at in the field, uh, feel, um, yeah, field positioning, what defense they're in, et cetera, et cetera. So sometimes that can be a tough place to attack, but it's really, really good. Boom right here. Jeez, I just threw a pick. Wow. But same idea where you're able to get that spacing, right? Now, something else I kind of wanted to go into was, you know, you can run a route combo like this. But, or rather, let's do something more so that would attack this a little bit better. Let's do something even like, like this, which isn't a terrible zone. Uh, it really isn't the worst zone route combo ever. Um, and the thing is, when you're attacking zone, you can get away with players being stationary. So you can get away with hitches, curls, ghost routes. Um, you know, I, really anything like that where the routes are pretty stationary. Whereas when you're playing man coverage, it's very hard to get away with stationary routes. That's something that we're going to touch on in the deeper video a lot more. But, you know, I, and it'd be easier to show kind of... This is one of my favorite route combos in the game. Is this right here, where we do something like this. The issue with this is that we have basically four routes that are all stationary. That end their route and just sit. Only one route is actually moving. This makes it really bad against man coverage because to beat man coverage, you actually need to keep moving throughout. Whereas a route combo like this is, let's do something, actually let's do something like this. This can be significantly better against man coverage because now we have three routes that are moving against man. And especially we have two routes that we know are going to get open against man coverage almost every single play with the slant and the tight end post. Deep post has an opportunity to attack deep and et cetera, et cetera, right? But yeah. Literally almost every single meta route combo in Madden history can be dated back to attacking each individual section. Very rarely will you find anything that, that doesn't. And while those sections can kind of move a little bit depending on the, the year, how the routes run, what abilities are in the game, et cetera, et cetera, a good example would be PA boot over. While PA boot over, does this Y route maybe get into the red area of the field that we talked about earlier? 
Maybe, but they're pretty spaced out between the drag, the Y route, and the X route to where they're all occupying different sections of the field, and it's okay, right? That grid that we showed earlier that I'm going to bring up back on screen uh, right now is not like the... Uh, I don't, it's not like the end-all, be-all of exactly how everything's spaced out. Rather, it's just kind of guidelines for Because technically, right, the Y route right here ends at like the 20, which would be in the red. But it's spaced out enough with the drag, which is right around here, and the post is around back here, that it's okay, right? That's kind of what I'm more so getting at. But that's kind of a, a, kind of a basic, nerdier explanation of stuff. If you guys, let me know if you like kind of me going a little bit more in-depth with it. Honestly... You, as an individual Madden player, never really have to worry about this. Like, th this is more stuff that kind of subconsciously goes on in my head and other and other people who kind of invent offenses and stuff like that. It's kind of what goes on in our heads when we're creating the game or creating plays, whether it's consciously or subconsciously, right? Because I really don't even think about it too much anymore. It's just kind of like, I just know it, right? It's muscle memory. But if you're someone who wants to understand route combos a little bit better, you want to understand how to make you know your own route combos, why different things work, this is a very basic kind of rundown of how these things operate and why you'll see some route combos be really, really bad and some route combos be really, really good. It's kind of a very basic idea of that. And yeah, like I said, um, you know, again, some people are going to think it's too complicated or it's just irrelevant and sure. But the overall fact of the matter is that this is how every route combo in Madden follows the rules. Every good route combo in Madden, pretty much, unless it's been a glitch, follows the rules that I've just kind of demonstrated. Another one I want to show really fast, this is the last one I'll kind of I'll kind of go with real fast, is if we go into verticals, right? Technically, A and B both attack the red part of the field, right? Technically, technically, they both attack super deep. The reality is, though, that's not really where you're aiming to throw them, right? You're looking to throw B pretty fast, and you're looking to throw both of them kind of soon and kind of early into the play, and you're not trying to get them to – you're not really aiming to throw B 40 yards downfield typically. And this – technically, you can say it's an exception to the rule, but even with something like, you know, you'll see people call four verticals, which immediately some people are going to say, oh, this is a huge exception. Even still, the, the purpose of, you know, a lot of people calling four verts, let's go, into, let's go into trio offset week. The majority of the time, four verts is meant to be, I'm not playing a good defense, is, to be, is meant to be thrown in the seams, though, right? A lot of times, that is where people are throwing four verts, whether it's B over the middle, whether it's Y in the seams. Y, and again, still, I mean, you technically have three routes here that are attacking the red, in reality, they're more so attacking and looking to be actual lethal, actually lethal in the kind of more intermediate part of the field. That really is, like, if you're looking to throw Y, you know, a lot of times you're going to throw it right here. Obviously, it's not, verticals isn't good against man coverage. But you guys have seen that throw get made, you know, a million times throughout every year of Madden. Very rarely are you looking for Y deep, X deep, and B super deep. It's just, it doesn't happen too often. And again, sometimes, you know, there are situations, right? This is, again, kind of that intermediate seam. There are situations where maybe you're you are taking a bomb play, but again, most of the time your play calls aren't bombs. They're more so taking advantage of, uh, you know, the kind of kind of that underneath those underneath intermediate to shallow areas we we're talking about. Yeah. So if you enjoyed the video, actually let me know. I'd love to go a little bit nerdier and deeper in some of our videos. But uh, if you thought this was more too complicated, let me know. And uh, yeah. Also, try to hit 10,000 subs on this channel before uh, Man 24. Do me a favor. Hit the subscribe button. All right, boys.